I'm Micah Smith, and in today's quick tip, we're gonna talk about advanced error handling techniques. Now, I try to keep these really short, and I don't wanna go through a lot of slides, but I have to show at least a couple to get us started for today's concept. So we previously did a session on the basics of error handling, and that works great just to get you started with using the try, catch, and finally blocks. For this session, we're gonna talk about some advanced concepts for error handling. So as a part of that, I wanna introduce a sample process. And that sample process is what we're gonna look at here in a second when we talk about the error handling approaches that were used to help solidify and fortify this process. So let's take a really small example where our bot connects to Salesforce, it pulls some unassigned cases from Salesforce, it extracts details from the case description, it does a lookup for uh, some of the data that it pulled from the description in third-party application, and then it reassigns the case back in Salesforce, right? So even if you're not familiar with Salesforce, hopefully that kind of makes sense to you. It's just a really basic process of, hey, we're pulling data from one app, we're gonna have to look something up in another app so that we can make a good decision on what we're gonna do in that original app. I wanna talk about three advanced error handling techniques. I'll introduce them here and then we'll get into the code and I'll show you exactly how I would implement them. So the first is a global flag for debugging and logging. The second is a retries left loop concept. And then the third is enhanced notifications. So let's take a look at those and I'll call each of those out as we go through them. Let's go up here to the top of the process. So I've minimized some of the stuff of the process just because it's not necessarily relevant to this particular session. Um, kind of a bonus tip I'll say is that notice I'm using a try, catch, and finally block on the outside of my process, but you'll see I also use some inside of my process as well. So I can kind of block off areas. So you can use those as nested um, try, catch blocks. The first point we talked about was adding a global debug flag. And so what we've got here is I'm doing my Salesforce authentication. So I'm gonna try to connect to the Salesforce API and pull back some values. If I did so successfully, great, we'll keep moving on. What I've added here though is a debug step. And in that debug step, what I'm doing is I'm checking to see if a global value, which I've named advanced error handling bot underscore debug flag is equal to true. So if that value is equal to true, then my bot will automatically grab a screenshot of whatever the screen looks like at that current time, as well as log to file. Now why that's important. Let's say that this bot is running in production and it's running headless, right? On an unattended client. And I don't have access to actually log into that machine. I'm not supposed to be on there. I don't need to watch it. What I could do is actually use a system like this where I have lots of these debug steps throughout my process and then use a global value that are right here. Uh, I can use this global value to control whether or not my debugging should be on or off, right? So here, I think I've got it set to off. I set it up as an admin. So um, it's, it's currently set to turned off, but I could turn it back on should I need to, right? And in that way, I could go through and actually have logging take place and screenshots without me having to re-push code into production or anything like that. And I could turn that off once I'm done. Hey, we investigated what was going on. This application wasn't there. This access wasn't right, whatever it might be. I can control that directly from global values. You could do a similar concept in version 11 just using the credential vault, but um, I would suggest using global values here for A2019. The next concept I wanna discuss is the retries left loop. So when we talked about our process diagram that we kind of showed there, we said that we were gonna pull back lots of cases from Salesforce. And when we do that, we would wanna loop through each of those cases, right? Cause I'm gonna have to do something to each one of them. So that's my outer loop here. What I've got on my inner loop here is a retries left concept. And what I'm doing here is I'm setting a max retries value. And if you look at my variables here, I think I defaulted that to three. Uh, I defaulted it to zero. I would typically default this to three, right? So that means at most this loop will run three times per case. Now, what are we doing inside? Well, inside of this, this is where we're trying to extract our details from the description, trying to do a lookup to see how to match that data and doing our case reassignment, right? Now, if that works successfully, great. I'll handle that in my finally block by exiting out and not having to worry about a secondary or third retry. 
if for any reason that fails, right? Maybe the other application I'm working with uh, doesn't have the data or isn't refreshing fast enough is most likely the problem. What I can do with this retries left concept is, again, assume that we find an error right here in the look state to find assignee, right? My code would jump over to the catch. Within my catch, all I'm doing here is just logging the fact that we had an error and, and saving that out to a file. But then notice here in my finally, I'm checking to see if the retries left is less than the max retries. So that would mean that this is the first or second time that my loop has failed, right? That I've gone through this process and failed. I'm gonna log that, but what I'm also gonna do is try to set myself up to succeed again, right? So in this case, I'm doing a F5, right? I'm trying to refresh that page so that the next time I try that same process, I try that same case, Hopefully that page would be refreshed and loaded the full way. And, you know, most likely I could connect. And what I've done is I've actually seen that work on several of the processes that I've created where I would actually log the fact of like, hey, what try are we on? And so if you look here in the logging, uh, I'm going to go to the very end here. I know this is all really quick, but I'm saying attempt X, right? The current loop of total loop tries available. And I'm logging that. And I could actually see in my audit log afterwards that, hey, it failed the first time, but the second time it worked. So the retry actually served a purpose. But anyway, what I'm doing in this is I'm setting myself up to hopefully have the screen and the applications ready to go again, so that as I start that loop again and come back here through my try block, I'm ready to go. That code and the applications that depend on are all set up and I should be able to continue processing. On my third try, if for some reason it still is not working, again, the most important thing with my advanced error handling is keeping the bot in a stable position, right? And so what I'm doing here, I'm logging that, but I'm breaking, which is gonna send me outside of this inner loop and back to my outer loop, where I'm gonna be able to increment, which would move me on to the next case in Salesforce, and I'll start to work again, okay? So again, keep in mind that the main goal for all of my advanced error handling is to make sure that the bot is stable the bot is leaving the machine in a good situation. The last thing I wanted to call out was advanced notifications. So I'm gonna minimize some stuff here so my screen is less crowded. This is the outside catch block, right? And so if I had an error that was unhandled anywhere inside of this, I'm gonna come over to my catch block. And in my catch block, I'm logging as an error, I'm recording a snapshot, but I'm also doing one more thing, and that's contacting support. So here I'm using a Twilio package to send an SMS message, right? Now, I wouldn't wanna be the guy who is has his phone number tied to this, but if you have an email address or a support email or a support phone number that this could be sent to, you could send a message to support to automatically indicate something is going on with this bot. And you could send a message, you could send that error message, you could send any information. Um, you could even, if you're sending an email, uh, save out a screenshot and send that as an attachment to the email. Um, those are all valid options for your error handling. And so don't be afraid to send very detailed emails as a part of your error handling. Sending an SMS message might be a little bit much, but just know that stuff like that is a possibility and a creative way to engage with your support team directly from the bot. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, again, make sure to like and follow us on social and on YouTube to subscribe for more quick tips. Go be great.